Thanks for tuning in to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. One of the things that we're going to talk about today is with all the intended corn acres for next year, which trait do you pick and how do you sort out the value between those traits? We'll talk about that today. We're also going to discuss one of the most important nutrients for your farm, sulfur. Might not be something you're usually thinking about, but we want to talk about the importance of sulfur and what you should be doing on your farm. Well, Brian, if you're not thinking about sulfur, you're probably thinking about how do I stop that weed of the week? We'll show you how to get this tough weed off your farm for good on today's program. But first, here's our Farm Basics. You spend all year working hard to get as much yield as possible at harvest. The last thing you want to do is put your grain in the bin and have it spoil before you take it to market. Introducing the Grain Temp Guard from Farm Shop MFG. Designed and built by a farmer looking for a low-cost monitoring solution for existing bins, the Grain Temp Guard tracks temperature and humidity with an alarm system to alert you when your grain exceeds safe thresholds. For more information on a system for your bins, visit farmshopmfg.com. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about weed control in shelter belts. Well, here we are, right along a shelter belt, Brian, and we think about so often that I don't want to hurt any of the trees, so when is the opportune time during the year to get some weed control work done? Well, it's probably right now. Depends on where you're at in the country, but the thing that you want to do is wait until a lot of the leaves have dropped off the trees. Now, if you've got an evergreen, well, the leaves are never dropping off, so it's a little bit more concerning. But with the deciduous trees, yes, if the leaves drop off, now you're much safer to spray around that. And then usually we start talking about products like 2,4-D. Yeah, in early spring or late fall, if we're putting 2,4-D out there, we got to keep in mind it works better when it's warmer. So when it's a little bit cooler, we're going to have to be fussy about what we do with the rate and, and what our expectations are. Getting great control can help you, though, too. So you don't want to spray it on the tree. So just try and go do a good job keeping it in between the trees and down on the, the lower canopy and you're going to do a nice job. Yeah, but here's the big thing. We want to make sure you're using the full labeled rate. What you're trying to accomplish here is not just killing the weeds that are there, because let's face it, when it's late in the fall or very early in the spring, there aren't nearly as many weeds as there are midsummer, right? So you want to leave as much residual as you can. Granted, 2,4-D doesn't have lots of residual, but it definitely has some. One of my big concerns in the shelter belts is the biennials, Brian, and that's what I'm trying to get. If we can knock them out in the rosette stage right now before they bolt next spring, We've done a really good job. Yeah, but then you talk about perennials. How are you going to do that? Are you really going to kill all those thistles permanently? Probably not. That's why we suggest spraying late in the fall. You spray again early in the spring. A lot of the products that are great on these perennial weeds, let's think about Tordon or Milestone. Well, that'll kill a lot of trees. So you usually can't use Tordon and Milestone out in shelter belts. And then the other product is Roundup. Now, if you want to kill everything, grass and all, then Roundup is a good way to go to kill those perennials. But if you're trying to save the grass and only kill the thistles, then we would tell you just do multiple shots of 2,4-D over a period of time. You keep the thistles at least suppressed. Well, I like the grass, especially in established tree belts because now you've got something to hold the weeds down. Right. So don't forget, now's the time of year to get fertilizer out there too to make sure you have good thick grass growth. And also, if you want to feed the trees a little bit too, getting some more fertilizer down in the soil is a good way to do that. Shelter belts need a ridiculous amount of potassium. You want to get your base saturation K levels up to 8%, maybe even a hair more than that. So in some cases, really heavy soil, you might need a thousand parts per million of potassium. I'm dead serious. And that will make your shelter belt that much more healthy. Well, it is tricky when you've got desirable trees out there that you don't want to hurt. That's why we talk about this in the late fall or very early spring to get your weeds under control. Well, one of the weeds you may be trying to control out in your shelter belt is our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? It starts with genetics, what you're made of. It takes agronomy. It's local. It's knowing your land and having the tools to put the right product in the right place. It's built on service with trust, grit, and determination. Because it turns out, what it takes to make the best product is a lot like what it takes to make a farmer. Golden Harvest, rooted in genetics, agronomy, and service.
The Guardian Air Twin Spray Nozzle from Hypro produces a twin spray pattern with air inducted droplets for superior coverage, even in dense canopies. Be effective and efficient with your spray application this season with the Guardian Air Twin. Hypro, helping you spray better. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt in a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt in a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. More choices, more money. With Bayer Plus Rewards, you choose from our broad portfolio of high-performance products. Earn more money on the eligible products that are right for your farm. And use our new portal to see your purchases, track your rewards, and decide how you want to use them. Visit MyBayerPlus.com to sign in and start earning. That's the advantage of more control in your hands. That's the plus. What's the most complex industry on Earth? It isn't big data or commodities, not genetics or meteorology or even logistics. It's a business that involves them all. It's farming. And we're proud to work with generations of American farmers in the most complex and rewarding industry on Earth. We've gotten a lot of questions about corn traits going into 2020. Yes, there are a few different things you want to take a look at, but the big question is, do you want to kill above ground pests or below ground pests? And then of course, are you going to have a Roundup trait or are you not? So we're going to talk about corn traits today. Let's talk about a premium trait to begin with. Let's look at smart stacks. We've got above ground protection, we've got below ground protection, we can spray Roundup, we can spray Liberty. Uh, you've got really the whole gamut and I think this product gets undersold. The reason why, it's got a high price point to it, so there's a lot to talk through and to think through. But giving yourself the option of using Liberty in the corn is a pretty nice thing too. Roundup's great for grass control, but to get some additional help on broadleaves, that's kind of nice having Liberty. Now when we look at the rootworm protection, this is really where most of the decision gets made. Do I need that rootworm protection or not? It's still working pretty good on rootworm, having the two different traits in there to stop them but I get it, it comes at a pretty good price point. So if you're in a corn on corn situation, it's certainly got to be a consideration on your farm. Yeah, well you talk about this price point and you mentioned that multiple times there, Darren, but let's not forget, you're not spending what the bag costs per acre. That bag is gonna treat two and a half acres, maybe three acres, so you gotta divide that out. And what really is that price difference? Where I'm going with this is net, you're probably gonna spend an extra 15 to $20 an acre. Well, what is insecticide cost for rootworm, the really good ones, the dry products are gonna be over $20 an acre. So that's really, in my opinion, about a wash. And the nice thing is you're gonna get better control with the trait than you are any insecticide out there. The insecticides at best are 90%, maybe 95% control, but you can get about 99.9% .9 control on rootworms with the trait. I definitely saw some fields this year that I wish the farmer would have had smart stacks out there because we had a lot of rootworm pressure, a lot of rootworm beetles that you've seen even this fall out in the fields. Now, if you don't choose that, you probably have chosen something like VT Double Pro where you've got above ground insect protection, but it's not perfect. It's not good on all the earworms. You've got really good control on European corn borer though, which seems to be one of the key drivers in the market. We've seen the ability to spray Roundup be valuable in that trait and the corn borer protection. We've had pretty good plant health with VT Double Pros in most cases, and many farmers that feel like 
they have a low to moderate pressure of rootworms or they're in a multi-year rotation, so rootworm pressure is not heavy, have just chosen to put insecticide down at planting time and come back with BT Double Pro. Darren, I want to talk about the Roundup trait in general, but before we do, let's go back to what other insect traits are out there on the market today. What new things are there? Well, there's a couple things. One would be the Viptera trait that does control those earworms that have been a real problem in parts of the country. Now stacking that Viptera up with VT Double Pro, we've got a new product on the market called Tricepta. It's the best above ground insect protection that I've seen. And so I see more acres of that going into 2020. Okay, we have a lot of farmers who have been talking to us about, should I just go back to conventional corn? I don't want the insect traits, and Roundup isn't giving me anything because I have all these Roundup resistant weeds. Look, you can certainly go conventional corn. We love conventional corn. Quite frankly, the only reason we switched away from conventional corn on our farm back 20 years ago is because all our neighbors around us were spraying Roundup and had Roundup ready corn, and then we had to worry about that drift going into our fields. But the big thing that I want to remind you of is Roundup still kills lots of weeds. It's fantastic on almost all grasses. And don't forget, prior to Roundup corn and Liberty corn coming out, grass was our number one weed problem in corn. It was our number two weed problem in corn. And it was our number three weed problem in corn. Grass is terrible for corn. You have to have great control. And even if you do a full rate of a straight grass killer pre, like a group 15, that a lot of times is not quite enough, especially in heavy pressure. It's nice having a ridiculously cheap post to merge option. I love having Roundup for $3 to kill all the grass out in the field that happens to escape my pre. Yes, you can spray Accent, but that is five times as much money as Roundup. It's harder on the corn, and it is certainly not going to be as good on the grass. Well, we do have to remember what makes us money on the farm. It's harvesting grain, getting to sell that grain, and putting cash in the pocket. So just because you pick a smart stacks trait or a double pro trait or you go conventional, that doesn't mean you've got a great hybrid. You have to pick the right trait package and you have to pick the right genetics for your farm in order to get yield. Well, weed control is super important if you want great yield as well. So make sure you're controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop it on your farm coming up later in the show. More choices, more money. With Bayer Plus Rewards, you choose from our broad portfolio of high-performance products. Earn more money on the eligible products that are right for your farm. And use our new portal to see your purchases, track your rewards, and decide how you want to use them. Visit MyBayerPlus.com to sign in and start earning. That's the advantage of more control in your hands. That's the plus. You spend all year working hard to get as much yield as possible at harvest. The last thing you want to do is put your grain in the bin and have it spoil before you take it to market. Introducing the Grain Temp Guard from Farm Shop MFG. Designed and built by a farmer looking for a low-cost monitoring solution for existing bins, the Grain Temp Guard tracks temperature and humidity with an alarm system to alert you when your grain exceeds safe thresholds. For more information on a system for your bins, visit farmshopmfg.com. There are a lot of steps to having a perfect season. Don't let your fertilizer plan be the step that trips you up. No matter when you apply fertilizer, no matter how, AgroLiquid has the experts and the products that'll help you move closer to your target and hit the bullseye. AgroLiquid moves you closer to your target in 1949, Morton Buildings constructed our first machine storage building to establish our bond with the farming community. Since then, our relationship has grown, and so have our product offerings. From the smallest specialized operation to the largest agricultural enterprise, we understand the needs of your business and continue to evolve to meet industry demands. Plus, when you build a Morton building, you're backed by the strongest warranty in the business. To learn more about the Morton Advantage, visit mortonbuildings.com. 
You spend all year working hard to get as much yield as possible at harvest. The last thing you want to do is put your grain in the bin and have it spoil before you take it to market. Introducing the Grain Temp Guard from Farm Shop MFG. Designed and built by a farmer looking for a low-cost monitoring solution for existing bins, the Grain Temp Guard tracks temperature and humidity with an alarm system to alert you when your grain exceeds safe thresholds. For more information on a system for your bins, visit farmshopmfg.com. If you have just been focusing on N, P, and K for fertility on your farm, you may be missing the boat on sulfur. Sulfur is ridiculously important for your crop. We're going to talk about that today. Well, we need sulfur for every crop. It's a, one of the essential elements, and it's known as a secondary nutrient, which means you don't need as many pounds as you do of N, P, and K but you need a significant amount of pounds of sulfur. So we want to make sure we get that out there. But the fear, Brian, is sulfur is leachable. It is. So I, I have to be a little bit careful. Okay, but it's only about half as leachable as nitrate. So if you've got heavy soil and you're in a colder environment and drier, you don't have to worry too much about sulfur leaching. If you have lots of heat and rain and you have very light soil, then absolutely you got to be concerned about this. Now the other thing you need to think about is there are two forms of sulfur that we talk about. There's elemental sulfur and then there is sulfate. And sulfate is the form the plant's going to use. We use elemental sulfur to actually lower pH. What happens is when you put elemental sulfur out there, there's bacteria that will convert that elemental sulfur over to sulfate. And in the process, sulfuric acid will be formed and pH can be reduced. So this can be a powerful tool. The big thing you're looking for with elemental sulfur though is you want very, very, very small particle size. If you don't have small particle size, you won't have good conversion and quick conversion over to sulfate. The other thing you have to have is oxygen in your soil. So if you have poor drainage, don't use elemental sulfur because it'll smell like rotten eggs out in your soil. If the bacteria aren't there, they aren't alive, they don't have the conditions to thrive, you don't get that conversion over and now you've got a big problem. When do you need sulfur in your crop? You need it all throughout the season and you need it to be available. And what you're going to see, like let's take corn for example, if you put just a tiny little bit of sulfur out there early, well once the plant uses that up, it's gonna start running short of sulfur. You're going to see that in the upper leaves of the corn plant because sulfur is immobile in the plant. It's so important that once the plant brings it in, puts it into a root or into a leaf, it's gonna leave it there, it's critical. So now the new growth at the top of the plant is gonna be where you're gonna see sulfur shortage. So make sure you're feeding it all through the season. If you've got light soils, that means just like with nitrogen and with boron, you're gonna be applying sulfur several times during the year. Or at least a couple of times. And I would say this too, every time you apply nitrogen, you should probably be applying some sulfur. Having adequate sulfur levels in the plant helps that plant be more efficient with its nitrogen use. And you hear all the time, use less nitrogen, use less nitrogen. Well, you can actually do that if you have the right balance of nutrients in your soil and in the plant, and sulfur is a big key. Well, Brian, sulfur isn't one, though, that you want to just spray all over the foliage. Kind of like nitrogen, you can get some burn on the foliage. Well, if you so put too much want, on. Yeah, it's one yeah. that you want to put down in that side dress or wide drop or just a number of different ways to get it out there. Uh, but it is important, and I agree with you, I'd put it on with the nitrogen. Or if you're going to do over-the-top applications broadcast, to Darren's point, you just have to keep the rate really low and keep the water volume really high. But the great thing with sulfur is, Darren already mentioned you have to worry about leaching, but the thing I like is sulfur will move around a little bit in the soil, so you don't have to worry as much about placement as you do with something like phosphorus that doesn't move at all. So sulfur you could actually put on the soil surface, and in most cases it'll move down, move down in the root zone, so all that's good. And you can use some of this in the fall too. I wouldn't get too carried away, especially in light soils, but we use a lot of ammonium sulfate in the fall. We use manure that contains sulfur. We put uh, water treatment lime on that has some sulfur in it. There are a lot of different ways you can get sulfur out, and if it's me and I'm super low in my soil, I'm going to probably put a little bit out in the fall and then maybe more in the spring. And the thing is, as you're mentioning, Brian, it can move around a little bit, so you can broadcast this. The efficiency of banding sulfur is just not as important as it is with phosphorus and right. potassium. Kind of like nitrogen, these, this is a nutrient you can get by with the broadcast. All right, now the big reason why we're talking about sulfur today is we used to get lots of free sulfur through air pollution. 
we just don't get that in North America anymore. So I realize your dad or grandpa might not have used much sulfur. You need to, because not only do we have less sulfur we're getting for free, but we also have much higher yields. And if you go to the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal app, you'll see how many pounds, and it's a lot, that a good corn crop takes. And even a good bean crop, or just about any crop out there, it needs lots of sulfur. Don't short yourself. One last comment, sulfur is very important in your garden too. Having the proper amount of sulfur for your garden crops really improves flavor in many different vegetables. So do some soil testing there, add some sulfur to your vegetable garden program, it will help. Sulfur is ridiculously important for any crop out there. It's a nutrient you should be applying every single year because it doesn't stick around in the soil very long. So take a look at the sulfur soil test you have, look at your tissue analysis, and consider applying sulfur at least once a year, if not more, on your farm. One other thing you want to consider for your farm is how to stop our Weed of the Week. It's coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, Agriculture Division of Dow DuPont. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher. With unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift. And near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> Weed of the Week is Volunteer Roundup Ready Canola. Now, Darren, I'm surprised you didn't make this more challenging for me because usually the canola that's out there is also tolerant to Liberty and it's tolerant to some of the ALS herbicides as well. All right, well. great. Tolerant to all those then. <laughs> Can't use any of those. Okay. So here's the, the problem with Volunteer Roundup Ready Canola. A lot of people don't even realize it's out there because they didn't plant canola before, but canola will move in on trains from birds. It just shows up randomly in your field and you think, oh, it's just a normal weed. I'm just going to go spray Roundup. And by the time you realize, uh-oh, I'm not controlling it, now that canola is big. And the key to controlling canola, just like most weeds, is you got to get it when it's small. If that canola is two inches tall or less, dicamba is actually not too bad. All right, well, let's be realistic. <laughs> most farmers prefer 2,4-D, and that's why the Enlist tolerant crops like the new Enlist E3 soybeans have been really popular in those areas because, hey, I can go back with 2,4-D, I can wipe out canola no problem. Yep, but again, keep in mind, a lot of people with Enlist, they're thinking Liberty and 2,4-D. So the Liberty is going to be their late spray. Well, a lot of the canola out there is tolerant to Liberty. So you got to be real careful about what you're doing. So just as a standard recommendation in soybeans, what we would encourage you to do is use the three pre's like we always talk about because both Metribuzin and the PPOs like Valor and Authority are excellent on Roundup Ready canola. Then you come post-emerge. I mean, if it's me, I'm probably going to go out with Flexstar, but again, you got to get it when it's small. Yeah, I like Pursuit as well, but if you want to use like I say, if a it's not a less resistant. Crop, I, I really yeah. like the E3 beans. I think that's a great option. Yep. All right. So then you turn to corn. Okay. So in corn, for me, I'd say verdict is probably the best way to go pre emerge. Post emerge, we already talked about dicamba a little bit. And so a lot of people say, oh, it's just not that great. Look, the HPPDs are really good on volunteer Roundup Ready canola. So use an HPPD in your system, even if it's a reduced rate, that's going to help. Atrazine's going to help. And again, the smaller that canola, the easier dicamba will take it out. Status is pretty good as well. Well, when it comes to wheat, if, if we're seeing this canola in the spring and we're talking about winter wheat, you know what, we probably got enough canopy out there. We're gonna do a pretty good job fighting it. I like starting out pre-emerge uh, with Sharpen. That's a good way to burn some things down. Then you come back in post-emerge and you've got a couple different options. Husky is probably the best. All right, well, that's it for our Weed of the Week. Volunteer Roundup Ready Canola. But stay tuned, Iron Talk is coming up next. There are a lot of steps to having a perfect season. Don't let your fertilizer plan be the step that trips you up. 
No matter when you apply fertilizer, no matter how, AgroLiquid has the experts and the products that'll help you move closer to your target and hit the bullseye. AgroLiquid moves you closer to your target. Tough, precise, efficient. Strip tillage with the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm. Learn more at SoilWarrior.com slash AgPhD. I need results, so I choose the one system I trust to take weeds down and keep them down on even my toughest acres with the kind of yield potential that helps keep me in the black to deliver my kind of results season after season. I choose the Roundup Ready Extend Crop System. I choose results. Engineered to be the most advanced concave system available, the XBR system threshes all crops, reduces grain loss, and significantly improves grain quality and storability. Probably the biggest difference that we noticed right away was the grain quality. The sample was much better. With this XPR system, now we've cut down rotor loss significantly. I can switch out a two pound cover plate in just a few minutes and jumped about 30% more on our capacity. Visit EstesPerformanceConcaves.com. Do you feel like there's never enough time to get everything done before planting? The window for spring work is quick and unforgiving. Give yourself the upper hand with the ProTail High Performance High Speed Disc. More and more farmers agree the ProTail is the right tool for spring field conditions and heavy residue management. Zero maintenance bearings, independent disc technology, oversized pins and bushings allow the ProTail to handle whatever field or conditions you can throw at it. Degelman High Performance Equipment. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. At Harvest, you have one goal, finding the perfect flow of grain from the field to the bend. Case IH Axial Flow Combines are engineered for matched capacity to deliver proven grain savings so you can keep efficiency flowing smoothly. Find yours with the Case IH Axial Flow. Temperatures are getting colder as winter draws near. You may have already changed your diesel fuel blend, but what are you doing with your diesel exhaust fluid? I'll share some tips in today's Iron Talk. Diesel exhaust fluid, or DEF, is used in Tier 4 and newer engines to neutralize engine pollutants. It's made of urea and water, and it can freeze at temperatures of 12 degrees Fahrenheit and lower. This requires inside storage of equipment and DEF supplies to avoid problems. If you've got that covered, here are the ABCs to keep your DEF and equipment in top shape. A stands for always keep DEF in proper containers. Think about it. It contains urea, so you know it could be corrosive. HDPE plastic and stainless steel tanks and jugs are the best storage vessels. Keep them in stable temperature environments and out of the sunlight. If you do, DEF should last up to a year in good shape. B stands for be sure not to overfill containers or storage tanks. If DEF ever freezes, it will expand. Give yourself at least 10% expansion room in tanks to avoid cracking the containers. The good thing about DEF, if it does freeze, it will come back to its original consistency after it warms back up and it should work just fine. C stands for checking your filters on a regular basis. Replace filters as necessary. After all, this is what keeps the DEF pure and allows it to do its job eliminating engine pollutants. So remember the ABCs of DEF storage and use as we head into winter and your equipment will thank you. That's all for today's Iron Talk and now back to the show. That's all the time we have for today's show, but before we go, we want to encourage you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show where we talk about great agronomics and we take your live phone calls each weekday at 2 p.m. Central on Sirius XM Channel 147. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have a Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. 
Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.